There is nothing in this world that I enjoy more than having somebody fascinating over to my kitchen and mixing it up. How is it? It's delicious. Okay, good. good. It tastes like a, um, like a fancy raspado. Raspado, what is that? In, uh, you know, where I grew up in yeah. East L.A. and Montebello area, there was these men that they used to carry a big block of ice and they used to shave uh, the ice. okay, yeah. And they used to add, you know, vanilla or, or strawberry. Or yeah. Whatever. But it was real, you know, this yeah, is yeah. fancy. Okay. Style. You're like the first guest on this that I don't know. So it's awesome. Everyone else I've had on so far yeah. are kind of people I know. And so this is cool. And just so you know, and I mean this honestly, I was a huge 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 fan of the contender oh, way before i met adam adam is my partner and you and you're friends with him too but adam is the one who does all this and puts this together and produces all this but i was such a fan of the show and i'm a boxing fan but not in the sense of like i know about boxers and that stuff it's i could get into boxing immediately i didn't care who was fighting i didn't even need to know their names i loved it and i grew up in boston outside of boston and um, um, Hagler spoke at my high school. Really? Yeah, when I was in high school. Oh, he was from Massachusetts. Yeah, from right. Massachusetts, yeah. And you know, people used to see him sometimes running around. He'd be in those fucking um, army boots and stuff like that and I talk remember. about his knees and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, so I was, like I said, I was just a huge fan of The Contender and I just got to rewatch some of it and yeah. watch your episodes, which was incredible. And, you know, just talking about Hagler right now, that opening fight that you had, was it with Najee? That's the first fight? It was with Najee Turpin. Yeah. yeah. From Philadelphia. The way that you guys went at it was just like I was thinking of the Hearns and Hagler, you know, that, that yeah, we first were, round. I mean, it was like a, we right just away. Went right at it, yeah. Yeah. Tell me, like, how did you get involved with that? What was the whole experience of that? Well, first of all, I want to get this out the way. Yeah. If you're from Boston, that means in the finale, I fought a guy from Providence. Yeah, I know Peter Providence. Yeah, yeah. It's okay if you're rooting against me. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. You. I wasn't rooting against you. I was, you know, I'm the worst Bostonian. I'll tell you why. I was hated. <laughs> I was a Yankees fan. Uh -huh. I was a Steelers fan, a 76ers fan, and, and a Flyers fan. And you didn't pick up the accent, really? Not really. I had a yeah. little, I have a little bit, because my yeah. father's from New York, so I lived in New York, too. So I have a good kind of, like, I'll say coffee instead of coffee, you know, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. And it's not too bad. Um, but no, no, I wasn't, I, from the get-go, I really was rooting for you. And the main reason is, is and, I, and I, you know, this is how much, like, you probably, you have a sense of storytelling, too, but it's not a... To me, it was never a question like everybody wanted it so bad. There was just one more element of right. you with your mother. There was a different motivation. There was a different thing that for me that was kind of always there that always felt for me made you one step hungrier than everybody else. Not that they weren't hungry. It was yeah. just my feeling. You hit it right in the button. Uh, everyone had something to fight for. You know, I didn't have no kids. I wasn't married. Uh, so Adam, who's our mutual friend, was one of the executive producers, and they were thinking of what can we, how can we tell this kid's story? He's a great character, you yeah. know. He reads his books, you know. He's a smart yeah, yeah, I love all that. Uh, but they couldn't pin nothing towards me until they saw me interact with my mother. You know, my mother had a, a rough childhood. Uh, she raised four boys in a one-bedroom apartment here in East wow, LA. Amazing. So hunger is just. I mean, we literally were hungry. Yeah. You know, at times. Well, my mom ne never let us go without a meal. But our meals were, you know, they were, they were poor. Frijoles. And, you know, that's why when you describe things to me, I love them. Because now in the second half of my life, I discovered them. But I don't know exactly what I'm tasting yeah, yeah. or what I'm eating. I just know what's good from what's not good. Right, right. Uh, so that hunger just came from, from wanting more. Wanting more. And then uh, these guys... Uh, your mom is still alive, right? My mom's still alive, yeah. yeah. And uh, she's still alive. She's. Uh, and did she's... you buy her a house when you went? I did. I yeah. did. I bought her a car. Uh, I called her boss. <laughs> the, 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 yeah. night, the night after I won the contender, I called her boss and I told her, I go, she's not going back to work. And she hasn't went back really? to work since now. That's amazing. Uh, I'm the, she, has, uh, she had four boys. You know, my three brothers never got married, no kids. So I'm the only one that actually really? gave her a, wow. a grandson and now a granddaughter. Yeah. So uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to do everything for, for the, my brothers who aren't really stepping up and, and giving her what they want to. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, but you're close with your brothers too, right? No, I'm close with all my brothers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm kind of a gel 
you know, between everybody. When whenever one starts straying away, I'll say, no, let's come, let, yeah. let's go out for a drink, let's go out to dinner, let's go out, let's take my mom out to brunch, or or let's yeah. go on a, a little getaway. I'll try as much as possible. But believe it or not, most of our most of our uh, reunions are around food and drink. Yeah, I can. and you would know being Italian. Yeah, you know? well, I'm I'm half Greek, half Italian. Brought up more on my Greek side. Okay. And then the Italian side kind of came later in the second half of my life. Okay, so. Yeah, but I was really, but it was same thing, you know, same, same thing, thing, like my, family, all the food, food and, yeah, all that. You know, drinks, there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a family heritage there that, that sticks you together. And then when you get an opportunity to, you know, better not only yourself, and but everyone behind you, mm -hmm. I mean, you're only, I was only, when I, I'm a contender, I was only four fights away from a million dollars. Before that, I had insufficient funds. Yeah, it's crazy. So tell me about tell I me love, about hunger. Yeah, I, there it is, right there. Yeah, and it's funny because it's like when everyone else was talking, it's not that mm -hmm. I didn't believe them. You know, everybody, like you said, a lot of them had families already, and you could see that. But it's like when you talked about your mother, it was just the next level over them. You know, well, and it brought me to tears. Yeah, it, it was really, it was really, and just to see her and see her nervousness and you know yeah. care for you and you know what's like just like how a mother would be you know how yeah. what's gonna happen you know? you're gonna what's you're gonna get yeah. hit you know and that's yeah. the thing it's like when that fight started i have notes too so i hope you don't mind i'm gonna look because this is really awesome um and how is that so you want are you done with that should i clear it look at that fantastic you can sip that if you want I don't I was know if you say, want to. You can I, drink it because okay, it's alcohol. Okay, I'm just, I, I know look, that. I know it's fancy. I no, 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 don't worry about, don't bourgeois, worry about but fancy. I'm, I will stick my pinky up. Yeah, while don't I worry about it. your fancy. So what I've done here, and like I said, it's a strawberry infused tequila, and mm -hmm. it's just for you to take a sip and see what you think. Okay, is that okay? It's right. right here. Oh, this. Is yeah, it. I have it already prepared for you. I have other things for you, and that's. I promise you, that's the only it tequila. But it kills a lot of, you know, it, it mellows it out. So I'm curious what you think, if that's palatable to you. That's delicious. You like it? Yeah. That's delicious because it, um, it tastes like tequila and you can taste the fruitiness of it, but yeah. it's not, it's not a, um, a fruity drink. Right. It's still, There's no can, sugar in there. I didn't there add anything you go. to it. It's, a, it's basically a strawberry margarita without any right. sugar or citrus. Right. I'm going to drink it. Okay, good, good. Yeah. So I like, part of what I do is kind of like reintroduce people to things that they don't like. Where's the like. smokiness come from? Um, There's a little... Well, it could be that type of tequila. It's not mezcal. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely tequila. So different, different tequilas, depending on the agave, how long they've been aged, they can have a little bit of a smokiness to it. Yeah, that's good. But that's these really are the good. best strawberries around. They're a gaviota strawberry from up in Oxnard. Mm. They're super sweet, and I love making it with that. All right, cool. Excellent. I'm sure one of my cousins picked them. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> a joke. <laughs> I didn't know they were up there. That's all. I just I meant, I meant, I I meant one location, have, not have, Mexican. I have, fa I have family in Oxnard. We used to go oh, out okay. there often, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so, like, what... Tell me about, like, the trajectory of, like, being a boxer, especially, like, when it came with the contender, because you had to have walked in that house and you had to kind of get to know everybody like it's like i think it's it seemed like an unusual circumstance Very. like no, no normally you'd like meet you know you'd fight a fighter and maybe you know about them for months ahead of time or you know what i mean and maybe you go see them fight i don't know what your style is of that but it's like now you're living with these people and it, it like you said you became friends with them and everything no it was unlike any other it, it really was an experiment you know they they, yeah. they uh, sequestered us uh, in a hotel and they literally didn't let us use our cell phones and they kept us away from the world They put us in a van and then they dropped us off in a location We don't know nothing of and they said open the doors. We were mic'd up and then we walked in there was cameras everywhere And that was your house And, that, and that, that's it the yeah. show started for us wow. So we really didn't know what to expect. So we all got in a single file line uh, And then Sylvester Stallone and Sugar Ray Leonard come out and they did you know it was gonna be them at the time? Before you, um, no, before? yes, we knew, knew that we knew. Okay. We knew that it was going to be a reality show with 16 boxers. We knew that it was going to be uh, hosted by Sylvester Stallone and Sugar Ray Leonard. Yeah, and we knew there was a million dollar prize. Other than that, we didn't know nothing else. Right. So when they came out, we knew it was real, and then uh, they 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 gave us the whole 
the whole breakdown, how things are going to work. There's going to be two teams, and then we picked out our teams, and we started sizing our opponents The West up. was like eat, winning right away every match. Yeah, well, look, it, 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 it really is something that, that is my opinion. Two different styles of fighting in the West Coast and the East Coast and down South as well. But, you know, they're, they're, they're in Philadelphia that, and East L.A., I think, are the toughest fighters. But then you're gonna Why get, is that? What is it about that? It, this is just my opinion. You're going to go to Ohio and get some of the best fighters in the world. Some of the greatest were from Michigan. You know, you know, Floyd May was a junior, the Michigan fighter. Uh, so many great fighters come from Michigan. But for me, East L.A. area is just, you know, Oscar De La Hoya came from East L.A. I grew up blocks away from there. Uh, there's there's a corner and I mean there's a boxing gym and a liquor store in every block. Oh wow! <laughs> That's the reason I think. Yeah. You know. We, and same thing with Philly. Same thing with Philly. Yeah. So I think it's the the how how urban the area is, mm -hmm. how we grow up. You know, we grow up with you know usually with in large families and older brothers beating us up, and we're 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 normally around other neighbors with large families and beating each other up. That's yeah. how I started boxing, right. whooping my neighbor's butts. You know, we would do these barbecue boxing So things. how old were you when people were like, this guy's got some talent, like he, he, you, could, you should do this? Uh, 15. Yeah. And it was at a barbecue boxing. I knocked out three of my friends in the backyard. With gloves? Or? Yeah, with yeah, gloves. Yeah. I never got in a street fight, believe it or not. Yeah. Never got in a street fight. Yeah. Wow. I got, you know, I, I avoided Why is that you think? You just Because I was actually a good kid. You know, I avoided confrontation. I mean, I got punched in the face often. Yeah. I just never punched back. I don't know why. Yeah. I just I would take the punch and I just didn't want to you fight. You just didn't want to, Did you feel like you would hurt somebody no, if you No, really? I not, I was actually afraid to fight. Yeah. I just I didn't know how to react. I wasn't really much of a counter puncher then. Then I then I re realized I was naturally good at fighting. And um, after that no one would punch me in the face. Wow. Yeah. But Boxing is an amazing thing because it, it, just like karate and other martial arts, it teaches you how to control yourself and, and your anger and, and your energy and your flow. You just, I mean, throughout the whole contender in those fights, you always seem the most poised and controlled the whole time. And almost like, I mean, from my opinion, like I said, knowing nothing about boxing, just the way you were, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just the way, it's like you had a confidence, you had a way of like, and it, I know, and always like, to me, I, it seemed like, the first couple rounds, I didn't know. It. Are you like wanting to see what they got, yeah, or did they always. really, no, did they really take you by surprise in the no. beginning? Or you just like bring it on, and then yeah. by the third round, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna. You I know, know what you are. You know, most fighters are are, are what they are. You know, uh, I'm not a power puncher. I'm I'm based off of speed, off mm -hmm. of timing, off of footwork. And I'm a very sly fighter. I mean, I'm the Latin snake. Yeah, I'm a snake I love in there. I love you know, it. but uh, I can't go in there and try to go punch for punch for with someone that is naturally stronger than me, uh, bigger than me, older than me. Uh, so you know, I found my strengths, and and that was just angles and timing and catching you off guard. And one of my main strengths on that show was breaking people down. And, mm. and you know, uh, I knew when a guy, uh, I knew when a guy wasn't strong or mentally. I think that was my biggest strength. I, I could. You I found could, their weakness mentally. I could tell when someone wasn't strong mentally. Yeah. And one of the the favorite to win the show actually the favorite to win the show was who? Uh, his name was uh. Well, let's keep the name out of it. But he won a world title. He won the world title. He won the world title. He won a world title after the show. Oh, after the show. Okay. But you. Ishe Smith. Ishe okay. Smith. Okay. He was uh, the guy that I found in the second round. Undefeated fighter. Yeah. Uh, he was already a top contender. He was a contender. I could tell that he wasn't mentally strong, you know, just by the way he handled himself around crowds. And he all was a, more of a loud mouth. Loud mouth. He wanted all shit. the attention. He yeah. wanted all the, the cameras on him. Yeah. He always wanted to make sure that he, that he was a, the alpha in the room. Was there a part of you that just like, I want to shut that guy up? No. No. I actually, I actually wanted to do the most I could to avoid him. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to win the show. Was he the one that you said like, <laughs> No, it was not. You didn't. You thought he was a wild card. You didn't. You thought he was God, crazy. That's the one I didn't want to fight. For. Right. That's why. Because I this guy. You didn't was know what he was capable of. This guy was the opposite of Ishe. This yeah. guy was quiet. This guy was yeah. would just train and go straight to his room, and he would do these weird things where he would sleep under the ring or he would sleep in the sofa. He didn't talk to nobody. He didn't be befriend yeah. nobody. He was he was someone that you couldn't get to. You you couldn't crack him. He was a nut. That's what I said. Yeah, on the you show. kept saying he was a nut. So. I didn't mean a nut this way. I yeah. meant kind of like a, a nut where you didn't know nothing. He, he's so he hard, didn't know how a hard he shell. Fit. Yeah. 
And uh, yeah, I didn't want to fight him. He picked me to yeah. fight, or else I, I would have Why do you think he picked him. you? I have no, no idea to this day. Yeah. I have no idea. He said on the show that, um, you know, I was undefeated. Uh, he saw that I trained. Were you the hard. only one undefeated? No, no, no. no there no. were a bunch of people, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, fought, I fought two guys that were undefeated on the show. Uh, no, there were several. I would say there was a handful, five or six. And the yeah. other ones only had one, lo one loss on their record. Right. Everyone, everyone there was pretty, really good fighter. Yeah, no, it was amazing. Really good fighter. Hey, listen, let me make another drink because it's going to take a... And I want to get you another, uh, like a big drink in you. And then we'll keep talking. And I just... Uh, That's what I'm here for. Yeah. <laughs> Is that... You, you like to drink, right? You know, I'm going to... Now that I'm retired, Matthew, I'm going to tell you the truth. I drank the entire... The entire time of my career. I just never... And I never drank when I trained. Well, interesting. And I never drank to excess, you know. I, but I would, I would drink a beer while I was hanging with my what friends. What is the training period for you? Like, what type of, what time is that? Two, two months. Two months. And I would refrain from a lot of things, not only drinking. You know, yeah. I would refrain from, from you know, sex, from eating what you know I wanted. That, you know what my traveling. favorite movie of all time is? Rocky. Raging Bull. Oh, yeah. Did you ever see it? Of course. Yeah. That's my favorite of all time. Of course. And that's what that reminds Remember me of. Remember when he, when he, uh, yeah, got he takes that, the water. He takes the water and the ice yeah. water and he yeah. pours it on his groin. Yeah. Because After he gotta... she gets him to tease him. There you go. Yeah. yeah. I never went that far, but I, <laughs> I got, I got, yeah, I got some good stories when it comes to that. Yeah. Um, that's what, that's what I thought of right away. No, believe it or not, it's a mental thing. Because old school fighters, you know, even though we've seen that epi that uh, that that part with the Raging Bull, Sugar Ray Leonard and Muhammad Ali, they're on record saying they used, they never followed that. They said no, we would have sex a week before the, the so fight. So what was it about? It was that? a mental thing. Mental. And it wasn't that you felt it killed your power. No, no, no. It had nothing to do with that. It was yeah. just all mental. And uh, you know, whenever you're whenever you do have sex, you know, you feel really relaxed. That's the last thing you, you don't want to want feel. That. You don't want your body to feel relaxed. Right. You right. want to feel this tension, but you want to feel this confidence with the tension. Like, I'm ready to go. My legs feel tight. You have a springy, you know, uh, uh, bounce to your step. Yeah. You want, to feel, you want to feel like a rubber band. You know, you're, you know, el elastic, loose, but elastic, where you right. can still hurt somebody. Um, Hold yeah. on, let me grind this real fast. Hold on, it's going to be loud. Hold on. Oh, I'm going to put this in. Um, hold on one second here. So do you know what a caipirinha is? Yes, I yeah. do. That's a Cuban drink. No, uh, Brazilian. Brazilian, right. So it's made with cachaça, which is a Brazilian rum. So I took the cachaça, I infused it with vanilla beans, mm -hmm. and then I ate passion fruits and this um, herb called lemon verbena. Mm -hmm. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to serve it to you in this nautilus shell and give you a straw. And, and what I noticed, and tell me if I'm wrong here, uh, it's not just the drink, it's the presentation. Everything, yeah. It's not just the presentation, it's, it's uh, the mood right before you give the drink as yeah. well. Yeah. It's like this entire uh, process. I used to tell people early on, see, I don't always name things as much anymore, but we, what I used to tell people is you have four, um, four ways to make an impression on somebody. The first is the name. You'd hear a name, right? right. It would evoke something. Then you would see it then you would smell it, and then you would taste it. And each one of those elements is mm. getting you closer and closer to the experience, yeah. Just, so like yeah a, a, just like a, I mean, just like a fine wine or a cigar. Yeah, absolutely. A cigar is the same way as well. So you can keep that in the shell like that, and that's for you to sip on. And we'll enjoy that, and then we'll I'll cook you something after that. Yeah, so let me see what you think of that. Wow, wait a minute. <clears throat> That's very um, citrusy. Aromatic. What's the word for colorful? What's the word for colorful? Vibrant. There you go. It's yeah. very like, yeah. right away it gets you. Yeah. It gets you right away. Yeah, so that basically is like cachaça that I infused. I put the vanilla bean in that. Yeah. And then um, pas fresh passion fruit. That's... That's amazing. Okay, good. Excellent. That's amazing. Yeah, that's, that's what I want to hear. When you're not saying amazing, I know that. No, no, no. <laughs> that, that right there is exactly what I expected with a, with a beautiful looking drink. It's Excellent. A, it, 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 it pops right away. It hits yeah. your tongue. It's like, whoa, there we go. Yeah. Very, very, very colorful. Like yeah, I said, vibrant. vibrant. Yeah, I love that. That's a great. Thank you. I appreciate that. There you go.
Um, so what, tell me like about Sylvester Stallone and Sugar Ray. Were they people that you looked up to before the show? Or, or, and how much were they, like I'm seeing them on camera with you. Do, are you having time with them that we're not seeing? Or yes. Did, yeah, okay. So you had more mentorship than we got to see? Good and bad. Uh, with, oh, with both, okay. yeah. yeah, with both actually. But um, Sugar Ray Leonard is the only one I actually looked up to because he was everything that I wanted to be. Yeah. Sylvester Stallone was different because I I wasn't in the acting business. I didn't want to be an actor. I didn't want to be in Hollywood. But did you watch a lot of, of films? Of course. And stuff? Yeah. Of course. I, yeah. I remember when I, the, one of the first things I told them, you know, everyone was talking about Rocky and Rambo. I, I remember I told them, and it rubbed the, it rubbed the slide the wrong way. I said. <laughs> I go, Sly, what were you thinking when you made the movie Oscar? That was horrible. You said that? I did. And, he, <laughs> and I remember he says, you thought it was horrible looking at it. You should try acting in it or something like that. <laughs> you so he had a good sense it. of humor about but it. But you know, you know one thing about Sylvester Stallone? He has a great sense of humor. Yeah. Very witty. Yeah. Witty. I heard he's very smart. Very smart, yeah. yeah. I, I rode a, a, a jet back with him. Uh, I forget where we were coming from. I think it was Vegas or Philadelphia. And we had a, a conversation. No, it was Philadelphia because it was a long ride, a couple of hours. And I remember him, him telling me, Sergio, whether you win this or not, you're going to have a story to tell. Write everything down in a memoir. Mm. Keep a journal, which I did. Well, you were doing that. Which I did, yeah. But you did that before that, right? No. But you were, just, were you just writing to write? Or? I, was writing to, it was write, I was writing to keep a memoir, to keep that experience. You know, every day I, I wrote in that journal to remember that experience. But I remember when he told me that, I was like... Wow, and then he started telling me about that's how he that's how he started with Rocky. You know, he would just little by little he yeah. would just put pieces of it. You know, he think of a name, he would think of he would think of, of a scenario, he would think of of something that can happen, and then he it just all came together. Yeah. And I don't know if you know the story behind Rocky, but he tried to pitch that several times. They tried to buy. You know the movie story about him. his dog selling his dog. Yeah. Yeah. I do. That's he amazing. mentioned that. Did he mention that? He mentioned eating dog food. He said he had no money. He was so yeah. broke he would eat dog and food. And he wouldn't take the offer. They said they wouldn't put him in the movie. That's right. And he stuck and he to held, that. Yeah. And he held his, and he yeah. held his word. But None he had to sell his dog. You know, he, he sold his dog and then he went back and bought it for $30,000 or something after he sold the script. No, he told, he told me I, I got... He did like a, a rated uh, R movie or something like that. Like a, like, oh, he did? <laughs> like a soft... Stop porn. porn type that's thing. how he paid in for order the to make get money. Yeah, so he would he would go to the extreme just to realize his and dreams. That, that's amazing. That's hunger. Yeah, that's yeah. hunger in a different but way. But it's also a confidence knowing that I'm going to be in this movie no matter what. Right. You know what I mean. And and he and and look at what what would have happened if he sold sold that movie. We never he never would have been. been talking about him. Yeah. From he there knew, he knew that. He knew. He, felt he deep it. down he knew. He, he felt, felt it. it. Yeah. And he got Best Picture, right? Yeah. Best, best Picture. When he went to accept, I think he got either Best Picture or Best Screenplay. That's when Muhammad Ali surprised him. Yeah, surprised yeah. him from behind. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, at the Oscars. Yeah, I remember that. And he that. started sparring with him on screen. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. So what this is, is, this is just a spiny lobster. It's the end of the season we have here in California, wow. just poached with some butter. And then the rice I cooked... Yeah. is cooked in seawater from the Channel Islands. I have a sea urchin diver I meet every week in a parking lot, and she brings me three gallons of water from the ocean because they're so clean there. You can put that to the side. Wait a minute. So you, you actually have somebody just bring you... Bringing me the catching the lobsters for me. You know, I scuba dive for years, and next year I'm going to do this myself. I'm going to catch the lobster. I'm going to spear the halibut. I'm going to do all that. Does it have to be from a certain place? Well, the thing is, my last menu before this one was all based on the California kelp forest. I can't wait for you to taste the oh, rice. Wow. Good? Good. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. I can't wait for you to taste the rice. The wow. rice I'm more proud of. That is so good. Good. You know, uh, when I won the contender, I started going to fancier places and realized what, what good food is. Right. Um, it... it you don't have to put much on it. No. It, that's it, the mistake, people. It doesn't have to be You don't fancy. have to put that no. much on it. It's the quality. Exactly. See, that's what I this, grew up this with. This looks so simple, yeah. but it's so magical. Oh, like, that's good. I'm happy to hear that. That's awesome. Yeah, you could taste You, you could taste, taste the, the ocean. Yeah. yeah. All the salt is coming from the ocean. It's actually not even salt. It's more uh, seafood-ish. Yeah, ocean. Like sea? Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what I do, which I'm not doing for you today, but 
um, I don't throw the shells out after I make the lobster. So I take those shells and I roast them in the oven and I put them in gin. You can see it behind you where that lamp is right there. And I make a lobster gin and then I make a gimlet and I serve it warm in a sake cup. So you kind of like, I usually serve it with this course where it's like you're sipping on, you know, lob, you know. I look at this, you're like a mad scientist, but with <laughs> food and drink. Yeah. What was, the, what was your toughest fight in the contender? Was it the finale? Because it was a no. mental thing? No. No, it was Ishe Smith. That was my that was your fight. That was your heart. Now, what yeah. made that so difficult? Well, he was very strong, uh, very fast. Did uh, you ever think you couldn't beat him at any point? Uh, no, no, I never felt that way. I yeah. was ready. Yeah. I was ready. I just knew it was going to be difficult. Mm-hmm. The next morning, I couldn't get out of bed. Oh, wow. It was, it was like my was and it was it only body a, shot? Uh, no, he, he would hit me everywhere but the body in the head. He would hit my shoulders, oh. my neck, my back, my shoulder, uh, everywhere but where, they, where he's supposed to hit me. So I was so elusive. But he was punching me really, really hard. And in the last round, I think there was like eight seconds left, he hit me with an overhand right. He never knew this. But he hurt me. I was. You didn't know. You pretend, pretended like I you was did. out. I'm like. You mean feet. if he kept going, you would no. Have... Meaning if the bell didn't ring, I had to fight one more round, and I would have been in trouble. Yeah. Wow. But it you was never like, told anybody that though. No, I ended up telling him, <laughs> and I, and I shouldn't have because now he won't let it go. Yeah. But he did hurt me. He did hurt me, and I I remember thinking like, you have to have the luck in order to succeed. Yeah. Because if that would have been the fourth round or the third well, round. Well, no, I think. It, what people kept talking about you in all these fights I kept hearing, and even like the finale, they kept talking about how smart you were as a fighter. Now, I know what I also love is like, you know, here you are, like you're talking about, you know, writing the stuff down for your memoirs, but like you were like studying Oscar Wilde and Nietzsche and all these things. But when I say smart, they felt like you really knew how to fight in a smart way. You know, like when you got, when you were so much in the inside. I remember what, what was your that title fight you did? It was against um, what's his name, Ferris. Running Forrest. Yeah. Forrest, Forrest. You got so much on the inside after kind of being away from him a little bit, right? And then your whole game changed. You know, what I mean, the whole fight changed because I had to switch it up on him. This is a four divi- a four time world champion, an Olympian, a great fighter. Running Forrest, yeah. a great fighter, and you couldn't just do one thing. You you couldn't just fight him in one gear. Or in one way, because he was bound to catch up to you. you know, Did he fight you in one way, though, that fight? It seemed like he was fighting <clears throat> he, he, in one he way. He never found his footing that first fight. Yeah. He never found... Uh, he never Did you re- fight him a second time? I did, in the rematch. Did he you had, win? No, he beat me in the rematch. Oh, he did? Yeah, but... I didn't know that. Okay. Hunger was long gone. It's a funny thing. It was not. It wasn't. A, it was less than four months uh, between me winning the world title from him. My dreams come true. Everything that I ever wanted in boxing came true. And then I enjoy the the spoils of victory. Yeah. I start going to all the Playboy uh, parties. I start going to all the, the, the mansion parties. The, every invitation I got, I went. Yeah. I went. And then they called me for the rematch. You're going to be fighting a media rematch. You're fighting in six weeks. Oh, my God. Six weeks. <clears throat> six weeks. And I said, okay. I weigh myself. And I was eating a lot of good food. I'm talking about, I think that's when I ate at French Laundry. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I was eating such great food. I was 28 pounds overweight. 28 over the 154? Over the 154. And, and you had to lose that in, in six, six weeks? weeks? Right. Now, does that attribute to the loss, being yeah. weakness? Like that attributes it, everything to the loss. I had to lose eight pounds a day of the, of the weighing. Uh, I don't like to tell that story that much because it, it diminishes the greatness of a man that's not with us anymore. Vernon Forrest passed away. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And, what happened to him? Um, he got robbed. You know, he was driving his car. He stopped and get gas. Yeah. He was with his nephew. Two guys set him up. They set him up? They set him up uh, because they caught him. They're doing life in Atlanta, uh, Georgia, I believe. And they robbed him for his Rolex and a world championship ring. Oh, my God. But Vernon Forrest, being the fighter that he is, when they ran off, he went. He got his gun from his car and ran after him. Oh, and they were... And they were waiting for him oh, wow. in a, in a, in a, uh, I think they were, they went to a, an apartment complex and they were waiting for him. And then oh, wow. he shot him in the back, the coward, you know? Wow. Cowardice. But a uh, great, great fighter. And then, of course, when 
you know, people pass away, everyone tells stories. I didn't know him like that. I just knew that he was a great fighter. You Turns out this, person. I don't know him as a person. This man donated a lot. He did a lot for children and charities. He said the worst things to me, but he was selling the fight. And after when I when I beat him, this out this out how much of a uh, of a great person he was. When I beat him, we're in the ring, still in the ring. I have his world championship belt around me, and he comes up to me, goes, "Hey man, all that shit I talked was all promotion. Good fight." Nice. And I'm like, "Wow." I yeah. thought you were, you know, I thought he was just, you know, that's that type great. of guy. And that's the art of war. Yeah. Yeah, let me, uh, I want to make another dish, too. Um, are you done with this? Well, see is, there is there more? Is there, is I don't there know. See if there's, uh, if it melted can... a little bit for you. You don't have to be done. There's no. It was melted. Okay. And now it's done. Perfect. Good. Yeah, I love, I love hearing about boxing because it's like, I'm a fan of boxing, but never, you know, I don't really follow it. But no, I love it so much. I, I just think it's exciting. The thing about boxing is uh, you could enjoy it as a sport, as an outsider looking in, but once you get invested into somebody you actually know that gets in the ring and fights, you're, you're invested as a friend and you're invested in the pain because when they're getting hit, in some way you're getting hit too. That's why that's why family members and mothers and... and How you know, was your mother during that rematch could, fight? Was oh, she man. just like the she wreck? Was, a wreck, yeah. yeah. She, I remember she told me uh, every every time, every time uh, I would get into a tough fight, which wasn't many. You know, I was a pretty defensive fighter, but she would tell me to retire. No, you she can't what? be doing this to retire. Yeah, yeah, you can't be doing this. You can't be doing this. You can't. And then I tell her, "Well, Ma, this is how much they're gonna offer me and pay me." Okay, this is your last one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember you were talking about. Um, how people get invested in you, you know? And I was just talking, you know, briefly to Adam, um, you know, about that fight. And he's like, you know, it was Vernon fight. And he was like, yeah, he goes, I was sweating buckets the whole time during that fight. It's like, at the end of the fight, I was just like, yeah. you know, you guys were good friends. And so I could understand that, you know? I was a four to one underdog. They were probably sweating because they bet on me too. <laughs> I don't see Adam as a better. No, no, he's not a he better. He doesn't that type. All my other friends, they bet a lot of money. Yeah. And they won a lot of money because uh, as an underdog, four to one. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on, I just want to make this quick drink for you, but you can keep talking. Um, so what is this? This is seaweed. This is a Santa Barbara Ogo seaweed. So I'm actually doing a drink. I'm actually doing a dish and a drink this time that I feel go together. So mm -hmm. not everything goes together. Sometimes I like... Drinks can live on their own, a dish can live on their own, but this is something that, for me, has to be consumed together. So you can pretty much make or concoct anything that the, the customer wants or the person wants. Like, okay, what do you like? I can, I can craft something to your liking. So what my specialty was, was, and I love doing this, because what happened was, is if you came into my bar, you would say, I would say to you, what do you like? You know, do you want spicy, bitter? You would say, oh, I want something spicy or, or no tequila, whatever that is, right? And then I would make you something based on that. What's interesting now, which is what I think comes with food too, is I'm doing tasting menus now. So there might, there's going to be stuff That's you're not going to like. That's smart. Yeah, but there might be stuff like now I can't just say, oh, Sergio doesn't want that. What am I going to do? No, I'm going with this. He might like it. It might, who knows? So bartenders, Take the chance. bartenders are evolving then because back you know, back a couple of years ago, it's kind of like, no, you're going to drink what's on the menu or go <laughs> yeah. to another bar. Well, I'll tell you what happened. I, I've told this story many times. Is This woman came in one time and she said, I want something sweet, but not too sweet. So I made her this drink. She goes, that's the best drink I've ever had. She goes, what's in it? I go, well, it's got gin and strawberries and balsamic vinegar. She goes, balsamic vinegar? Yeah. I hate balsamic vinegar. Can you make me something else? I said, you just told me it was the best yeah. drink you had. She goes, I know, but I hate balsamic vinegar. So from that moment on, I'm like, I'm never you having, never I got rid of a menu. Completely. No, no never menu. tell. How about never tell them what's exactly Well, what in I it. said is, is I'm not going to tell people what's in it anymore until they tell me they love it or not. It's like the secret sauce. You don't, you don't <laughs> yeah. tell them the, you don't, you don't tell them the, the well, secret sauce, like it. what they're yeah. made of, right? Okay. So this has Benedictine, which is an herbal liqueur way back in the 
you know, 500 years ago in the monasteries in France, and I put sesame oil as mm. the sweetener with a little bit of citrus, okay? I didn't even know sesame oil was sweet, yeah. is it? It has the essence of sweetness. Oh. You've got a touch of sweetness in here, and then what I like about this is, this is what you can do. So you have this little fork here that you can use, okay? So what I like to do is, you'll take a sip of this drink and then eat this. At the end, when you're done with everything, you can take this seaweed, put it in here with the rest of the dressing, and make a little salad and eat it like that, okay? So it can live on. Man, this is some fancy stuff, Matthew. <laughs> Thank fancy you. stuff, I'm telling you. All so right, what so... I want, yeah. Oh, yeah, use this. There you go. So this is fresh halibut. So this is local halibut um, right off of Ventura here. Oh, wow. It melts in your mouth. Yeah, I mean, it's so succulent, right? Wow, that is... Any spice coming through a little bit? No. No. Oh, you know... At the end? At the very yeah, end. See, yeah, see, I just tasted it right that's now. That's how you want spice to come. You don't want spice wow, to be right drilling right. through the meal. Now take a sip of this before your next bite. I'm curious wow. what you think. That is so good. Good. Yeah, it's a quality that is mess. So good. It's That's so what I fresh. It's so um, um, vibrant. It it melts. Yeah, it melts. We call that in Greek lekum. Lekum, lekum. is like it's like oh, it's just like it's it's this melts in your mouth. It's just juicy. Like you can be toothless and chew this. <laughs> No, yeah. That, that's how I describe it. Yeah. It's so good where you don't need teeth. Um, so that's awesome. All right. So I got to yeah, taste. Yeah, take a sip of that because I want you to, I'm really curious because this, this is, is very different. This is delicious. <laughs> Probably the best fish I've ever had in my life. Okay. So how do I stop? Oh, I can eat that. You can, but don't worry about eating that right now. Okay. That's for later. It's really about take a sip of that drink. Now take a bite of the fish. So you're almost like you've got that sesame oil going. Mm, I taste the sesame oil. Yeah, now. so now ah. you take a bite of that, and now you've got, it's almost like a Japanese dressing with the fish. I was about to say it's, it's, it's Asian fusion, but, yeah. but it's way, 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 way better than what you'll have at a Japanese restaurant. Oh, cool. Excellent. And then you get spoiled because you realize this is really good, but then you're craving the mix. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So right now I try to take two bites of this, but I'm kind of, Feeling good. for that mix. Yeah. What, that. Do you, what do you think it is? It like it complements I just think it so that's well what I'm that saying. it has to go together? So that's what I was saying. It's like there's a lot of times where I like to pair things. This is a very, a very adamant yeah. to say you must have these together. It's not a separate thing. So I wait. I, I made the mistake a couple of times. Be like, all right, start that. I'm going to make this drink. I'm like, no, wow. because what happens is a different experience. Like what you're saying it is that seesaw. Okay, yeah. so now I mix this. Take yeah, don't you don't don't the, not the drink. Just take the seaweed out. Yeah, yeah. Take all the seaweed out. You might need more. Yeah, and then swish that around. This will be might be one of your best bites, hopefully. You know, this is the first time I'm ever gonna eat seaweed. My son loves seaweed. seaweed. Oh yeah, yeah. I love, my sons love the dried seaweed. Uh, but they won't eat this. But I've never had seaweed. This is my favorite because it's you know what, it's not seaweedy. Yeah. It's got a great crunch to it. That's not seaweedy at all because yeah. you, you're not tasting salt. No. How you're is tasting that? the juice. Yeah. You're tasting a, it's like a fine salad. Yeah, exactly. It's like a fine salad. With, this is my favorite kind of seaweed. It's called Ogo and it's from Santa Barbara as well. It's like and a, I can't believe it's not on more menus. Oh, wait a minute. Now you taste the seaweed when at you're about end. to, at the end, yeah. yeah. Is your mom a good cook? The, I know you grew up in a different way, but the it's funny like, thing is, I thought she was. Yeah, really. <laughs> when did I, you realize that you? When that I started she tasting wasn't. great food, and then I realized like, ah, she tried her best. Yeah, you know, she, it was just real humble what food. What did she cook? What kind of stuff? Beans, did? rice, simple meat, simple is she ingredients. She from Mexico too, yeah. right? Yeah. Simple ingredients. Everything came with tortillas. Yeah. I don't care what did you she, ate. Did she make them from scratch? Of course. Well, sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Most of the time, it was just everything with tortillas, everything with cheese, and everything with avocado. The avocado was the, the, yeah. the, the, the sexy part. Do you want another drink, by the way? I was thinking of making yes. you to resurrect I'm your not. gin and tonic that you won't touch, but make, it, make a gin cocktail with arugula. So last night, I made potatoes for yeah. my kids, and I cut How them up. How did you make them? Well, I, 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 <laughs> I cut them up in, in, well, first I soaked them, and then I cut them up in cubes, and then I... 
I, I seasoned them with paprika, garlic salt, fresh garlic, uh, you know, salt, pepper, and what else? I seasoned them nicely. And then I put them on a really hot uh, uh, cast iron with a little bit yeah. of butter, yeah. right? And a little bit of olive oil. And then I got a good little char on them, and then I put them in the, in the, um, in the uh, like oven. Like bake them, yeah. In the oven. And I How long did you bake them for? Uh, after you, when you put them After oven. I got a good little crisp one, I think like 12 minutes or 10 or 12 minutes. 12 minutes. And, I, and then afterwards I checked them, see how I tasted one, and I wanted them crunchier, and I put a little cheese on them. I brought them out. They were fantastic. I thought, man, I, I, I even put a little bit of uh, uh, parsley on top of them. No, I'm sorry, basil on top of them. And thyme. I crunched it all. They were sexy potatoes. I served them to my kids. They didn't want to eat them. Isn't that amazing? So then I took out all the good stuff, <laughs> and I, I basically just... Uh, I, I Blows told my, my daughter, mind. I told my daughter, I go, taste it now. I just basically gave her the inside of the, the potato. Mmm, it's good. Blows my mind. Yeah. I that's, go, okay. All it's right. the craziest thing. Yeah. But one of my kids likes dark, dark chocolate and one likes black, black coffee. So I know there's hope. Yeah. It's just they're not there yet, you know? So that's what I'm going to say. So tell me, we didn't get finishing. So you finished that fight, you lost that rematch, mm. and then what? Well, I, uh, I was a former champion and I had to, I had to get my, 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 my reputation and my pride back, my hunger back, which I got right away. Right away? Right away. And yeah. that was why? Just because you lost, because the I hunger lost. automatically came back? It, I lost, and I realized, okay. Is Do this people what it, have to lose to get that hunger yeah. back? Yes. I would say 99.9% .9 of people need to lose to realize the hunger that they got. I don't they like, got, the, they I got don't like what that feels like, too, yeah. right? And, it has a, and, and that's why there's a great analogy to life when it comes to fighters. Because you, you could just be a, a human being working any ca kind of nine to five, any kind of job, any kind of blue collar job, water collar job. You get to a certain point and then you get complacent. You lose it or lose some of it. And then you realize, what did I do wrong? Oh, I stopped working that hard. Yeah. I'm not putting in the time. I'm not putting in the effort. I'm, I'm not putting that extra oomph in my, in, in, my, in, my, in my work. But if you can kick yourself in the ass and don't need no one else to do it, that's when you know you're mature. I love that. I love That's that. That's when you too. know you're evolving as a, as, a, as, a, as a person. Yeah, I agree with that. But nothing like getting your ass kicked. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. I've only been in two small fights in my life. Not even really fights, you know? I, I, didn't, mean it, I, didn't, I didn't mean it literally. Yeah. I you mean, know. Right, keep getting back. So you, you, after that rematch that you lost, then what, what has your life been and your fights been since? Well, I, I, I got back to a, a, the big stage again, and that was in 2008. So I won the contender in 2005. Yeah. I won the world title in 2008. I lost it in 2008. And then I got back to the big stage in 2010 versus Sugar Shane Mosley. Okay. Here at the Staples Center. It was on an HBO pay-per-view. Oh, wow, wow. And uh, I fought him to a draw. And that was your second draw? That was my second draw. And I remember that was the ugliest I've ever felt after a fight. <clears throat> you mean looking? Looking, feeling. Why? Everything. Because sometimes when, whenever there's no winner and no loser and there's a stalemate, it feels worse than a loss. Because you, up, you not only did you upset yourself and your team and, and disappoint a lot of people in, in your promotion and in the network, but... 18,000 fans that showed up to, to watch a winner, everyone leaves unsatisfied. Yeah. So that one really, really stuck to me. That was in 2010. That one depressed me. People respect fighters because they do what other people don't. And that's the pride that I take into, you know, losing right. or winning. And uh, when whenever it's a draw, it's kind of like I let everyone down. Yeah. Give me another chance. Yeah. And that's the ignorance of being a fighter. There's this, I can do it. I can keep doing it. And you didn't get to right. fight him again, right? No. No. No, I didn't get to fight. He ended up fighting uh, uh, Manny Pacquiao next. Oh, wow. That's a big fight. Or Floyd Mayweather. Who was it? He got two big fights. Wow. Yeah, so he fought, he fought Pacquiao, me, and then Mayweather. Wow. That's a great, com um, yeah. unbelievable company. Or it was Mayweather, me, or Pacquiao. Well, whatever. Yeah. Can you imagine me being stuck between the <laughs> I'd like to see that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, no, it, 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 was, uh, it was an experience. But, yeah, if I, if I can take it back, I would definitely go out of my shield. But part of being a fighter, part of being, you know, 
human is you can't go back. Yeah. You look back and you say, Damn, missed, op- they, missed opportunity. Yeah. You got to move on. Like, what, what do you do now? Like, what, what's your life like now? Like what, well, now I'm, I'm, uh, I'm outside looking in. And I mean that in a lot of ways. You know, I'm a, I'm a parent now. I'm a father now. You have two kids, right? I have two kids. So now I'm on the outside of my friends going out, and I'm just looking in. You don't go out at all, really? No. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a stay-at-home dad. Uh, you know, I, I, I do a lot of uh, cooking now. I, I, I pick them up from school. I drop them off from school. I get them dressed. I'm a stay-at-home dad. That's my family life and my professional life. I'm on the outside looking in the ring. I'm not boxing anymore. I'm commentating. Oh, that's awesome. So now I'm a, I'm a, a broadcaster. I'm an analyst for the Zone, which is a streaming, a sports streaming service. Is it for boxing, right? For boxing. And many, how many long have you been sports, doing that for? Many other sports, but I've been doing it for over three years okay. now. Okay. And it's something that gives me just as much of an adrenaline rush than when I was actually in there getting punched. What is it about it that you love? You're still walking a fine line. Yeah. Only you're not doing it physically. You're doing it verbally now. You got to pick the right word to describe what you're seeing at the right time, and you only have a certain amount of time to do it. And then you have a guy that's actually yelling in your ear that's doing the actual color commentating it. And there's the right hand. And oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like, like a nice dance back and forth. Yeah. I mean, the adrenaline is like walking a, a tightrope. What's the best fight that you've seen in the three years on the zone? There's been too many. Really? There's been too many. There's been upsets. There's been heavyweight championship of the world in, uh, in Saudi Arabia. There, there's, I, I went to the United Kingdom and called a, 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 a big fight there. I called probably the second biggest upset in boxing history. Which, who was that? Well, you know the first one, right? Mike Tyson, Buster Douglas. Oh, yeah. You called that? No. No. I called the second Oh, so, I'm sorry, sorry. Okay, and which is? Anthony Joshua and this Mexican guy named Andy Ruiz. Who beat him? Fought in Madison Square Garden in the Mecca in boxing. And he was like a 12 to 1 oh, underdog. I gotta watch that. He looked like a flabby guy that got <laughs> off the couch. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't give him no chance to win. Yeah. And this guy took it to this undefeated Adonis Greek statue looking muscular heavyweight champion of the world and knocked him out. In what round? Uh, it wasn't long. It was six oh, yeah. or seven rounds. Wow. But he knocked, maybe, maybe eight, but yeah, he knocked him out. Wow. And they made, they made a, a Sylvester Stallone. He actually, was there? Actually made a documentary on that fight. It was called oh. One Night oh, because it was so Rocky-like. Yeah. And I remember when I was calling that fight, I said, uh, we have Mexican Rocky in front of us. You know, be- when did you realize in the fight that you thought he was gonna t- he was gonna he had the potential to take it? Never. Not until he knocked Not him until out. Not until he took it. Really? That's what an underdog is. That's why those. So the whole time you're thinking there's no way this guy's gonna win. No. There was nothing no. he was doing. Nothing. Nothing he was doing the whole time. That's fight. why we're talking about it. That's why I think. Wow. So that's. It's the second biggest upset in boxing history. Nothing's going to top Mike Tyson in Japan. Nothing's going to top that one. He was but you felt, one. But you felt with Tyson and um, Buster Douglas, you could see that he was fighting. You could see that Douglas was fighting Tyson and, and had the potential. Like you could Douglas see... Had a good, that Douglas was a sneaky, damn good fighter. With a, and he was, his mother had just died, and right? His mother had passed away maybe a week or two before. Yeah. And he had that perfect... It was just a perfect storm of, of hunger, of... Of, of personal problems, of talent, and the right opportunity in front of him. And, not to add, Mike Tyson was actually indulging. Just well, I was going to say, that was just about to add that. Yeah. That was his indulgence of, oh, I got this. I you got know? this. He, you know, there were stories of him, you know, uh, uh, having a good time in Japan. Yeah. Let's just leave it at that. Well, thank you so much, man. This was absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Huge fan of yours. Loved. I love that I got to rewatch your fights and uh, even just like in the t- contender when they showed all of you know everybody in the beginning when they're introducing. Even your picture was the most intense. Like you had that still shot. Um, you know when they were introduced, yeah. everybody, you had the you had the greatest like intense picture. Like that guy's gonna kill you. Eye of the Tiger. Yeah, man. I loved it. I and loved now it. Now I got the eye, eye of the Kitty Cat. I'm retired <laughs> now, man. I like. Listen, I I love what you're doing. I love that. You know, it's like I love. Um, I love the juxtaposition of like you have the family now. Yeah. You know, like your mother was looking after you, and now you're in that position. You know. 
And that's the position. That's a good word. I love trying, it. And I'm trying to put together the puzzle. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Pleasure, you. man. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you.